We're going to take you on a journey. Look, to be honest, there was two days I laid on my bathroom floor. I can't believe I'm crying already. I can't imagine the grief of a parent mm -hmm. who loses a child. And you be the greatest version of you, then, then I feel like my work is done. Hi, I'm Tam Wrigley and welcome to the Beyond Beautiful journey. Jackie Gillies, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. And your new book is out now in all fabulous bookstores. It's a Booktopia and Dimmicks yes. and some, some great Robinsons, Robinsons. Angus and Robinson. I've had like so many, yeah, in all good bookstores. All good bookstores, yes. yes. I've had lots of people asking me where to buy it, so I've been dropping the link in on Facebook. Yes. Um, but tell me all about the book and what drove you to put your life down on paper. I'm a manifester, so I believe your thoughts create your experiences and I've been doing vision boards for the last, oh, I'm 38, but I don't, you know, I think I look pretty good for 38. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, I'm, like, I'm just thinking about the times. So I'm, no, I've been doing um, vision boards from the age of 17. Mm. So everything on my vision board to this day I had. Um, and on that vision board was a book. But I'm going to say I was, I started doing psychic medium readings from the age of 24. And this lady had come in for a psychic medium reading and she was a director of a well-known publishing company. And at that time, that's when I was finding myself and going through the stages of coming out of a negative relationship. And so um, what I want to say is she actually said to me, I would love for you to write a book because I had given her a psychic medium reading and I had told her things that nobody could know. Mm. She said, there's no way in the world that people, that you could know the things that you know and I want you to show people how to listen to their intuition. I said to her, this is not the right time. I yep. wasn't ready to be transparent in my life or anything that was going on because I was still struggling with certain things in my life. So fast forward um, the years on, I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. I went on the show, I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. and. On that show, the only thing you have to do is think. So for mm. me, I was thinking about things that I can do to help people on a more greater level. And I'm always thinking about that and it just I just kept hearing book. So I put it out to the universe and when I meditate, people didn't know this, on, I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. I'd be lying in my beautiful canvas bed that I had there. It was so soft. <laughs> no. I'm um, just visualizing about the things that I need to do to inspire people on a greater level. And for that, I kept hearing a book again. And so when I came out of the jungle, I had two publishers hit me up out of nowhere mm -hmm. and said, Jackie, we want you to write a book about your life and because we'd seen you do psychic medium readings on the show mm -hmm. and we are so interested and we know there's a lot of viewers out there that really want to know about your life, your journey and what you've experienced. Mm -hmm. And I thought this is the right time and it is. So, and over the years, a lot of my clients, because before I did The Real Housewives of Melbourne, I was well known as a psychic mm -hmm. medium mm -hmm. um, in New South Wales. and so. A lot of my clients would say, Jackie, can you please, please show us how to listen to your intuition, talk about how you got to where you got to and be really transparent. So hence why I wrote the book, Shine It Up. And I will say when Sophie, I went with Sophie from Hachette because she's she reads energy, she's into yeah. the energy, she's a yoga teacher. And so it's almost like the universe put me there or mm. put me there with her. So the energy synchronized up. And so the way I wrote the book was, I just kind of, I'm a, I'm a good talker and I'm good at explaining how to move from a certain stage in your life to another stage. And, and I knew that my clients wanted to see how it is that I listen to my intuition, but also my life, my mm. life's journey. And so hence the book, yeah. Shine It Up. One of the things I loved that you talk about, and you touched on like, I think a lot of still relevant um, topics today but that were going on when you were a child and one of them was bullying at school you were bullied to the point where you were ostracized you were you know left out to sit by yourself in classrooms while you know like not from just students but from teachers yeah um, I, I don't like um, you, I don't like playing the victim card mm. because I believe that a lot of children have some sort of experience where they haven't felt so good about themselves mm. in school from other peers and whatnot. So for me, I kind of try and take what I've experienced and don't allow it to um, define me, allow yeah. it to inspire me. So yes, it, uh, it wasn't until I kind of started talking about my book and 
Sophie was asking me about my childhood and mm-hmm. then I blocked it out. Mm. And then you block things out that you, you don't want to remember. remember, you know, that wasn't always the nicest part of your life. Mm. So when I started exposing that, that's when it all started coming back. And so, um, yeah, I was. It was quite mm-hmm. horrendous when I was talking about it. And there was even times in the audio book where I was like, when I was going over the passage of being bullied and being in a situation where rocks were thrown at me, and, you know, you want to get back to your own country and children can be, um, children can be really hurtful and, and mean. But then again, I have to say that kids, I can't, I'm not angry with who said that to me because they were children yeah. and they weren't evolved. It's not like they were an adult, you know, kids say some dumb, dumb things. Mm. So, but I will say it was horrendous. My brother was um, horrendously bullied. Yeah. He, yeah, and I think these was. days, you know, like back when we were mm. at school, you know, bullying happened at school. Now it's sort of like a 24-7 because you can't get away because of social media. You know, kids are being bullied on social media. Kids are being bullied at school. It's like they can't have that break away from it. But if you could sit down and or address yeah. an assembly of children, what would your message be to the kids that are coming through now? The first thing I would say is do not compare yourself to anybody on social media. Because let me tell you, there's happy, I'm so amazingly happy on social media, but it's fake. Mm. It is fake. I can see through that. Maybe because I'm not just being psychic, but being in, um, being in the media myself, I've seen, I know people that post things that aren't authentic. Like, oh, I'm, ha- I'm happy in this relationship, where I know that the person is dying. I'm not happy in this relationship. Yeah. <laughs> or, you know, you know, their body looks like they're a size six to eight, six to eight. And I'm like, well, that's not actually how you look. Yeah. There's a lot of, so what I would say to children is, firstly, do not compare yourself to others. Um, learn how to love who you are and be um, be proud of being different yeah. because so many children, what I find is since the birth of social media, it's almost like because everything's instantaneous, you don't have any time to process life because what you're doing is you'll go to school and you look at the, um, the social media and it's there, everything's yep. there. And it's almost like you don't have the communicate. People aren't communicating anymore. And what I'm finding too is social skills with um, over the years of doing readings, psychic meeting readings, where parents will come in and go, my child wants to sit in the bloody bedroom and not get off the computer. Mm. And I'm like, that's because of the birth of social media. But also, I feel like it's a parent's job as well to say, yep. you are not going to be sitting in the bloody room. Because I know parents that allow their children who are six and seven and eight to sit on an iPad. And I understand now we're in a time where People are going to allow your children to have the eye because that's not how you watch movies and whatnot. Mm. But I feel like there's got to be a monitor time, and yep. they're not doing that. No. And they'll they come just and, think that they're putting yes. it there to shut them up. Yeah, yep. and I Here, know, an yes, or a six-year-old yep. that's sitting in their um in their room, who knows who they're bloody speaking to? Yep. Because that can also be a dangerous thing. Oh yeah. Um, and then some parents aren't monitoring it because they go, oh, well, they're just watching this little movie. Mm. But then you've got these other um apps that can just filter into mm. that. So you've got to be very aware of what's going on. But social media, I believe, is um, a positive and a negative. Mm. And I was just watching um, the morning show this morning and it, and what I heard statistically is that w- there is mental health issues with suicidal mm. people. It's one in four. Yeah, it's shocking. And I believe that um, social media has a... Um, a big part of that. Part of that. Yeah. yeah. That's something that you touched on in your book too. Um, with I think you, there was a, a sentence in there where you, you... I think with the whole bullying and you put the, the leather belt around your throat to, and you were at that stage or yes. and then there was another stage I think with Paul um, yes. a bit further down the track I guess can you sort of elaborate on, on that yeah a bit and... being bullied I used to go home and cry and because I was I'm Croatian born mm-hmm. but my parents integrated very well with the Australian culture my dad worked in the mines mm-hmm. and we had a lot of Australian friends my dad was very, still very strict growing up, but I had a lot of Australian friends too. That was primarily who my mm. friends were, but I had a lot of um, friends in, say, Sydney that only um, kind of associated with the Croatians or the Italians, like the more the Europeans, and there was no really Europeans in the school that I went mm. to. And so being bullied and coming home and going, this is all too much. Not I, When I look back at that, I didn't want to take, I wasn't in a in a place where I was going to take my life. I just was angry and frustrated, but I knew what the moment of despair would be like for somebody that just doesn't want to be here because in that moment, it was like, I don't want to be here. Mm. Um, could I have went the next level and done something? Maybe, yes. Mm. But I just remember just doing that to myself and wanting to just not be here. And if you, I'm feeling that pain. I didn't want to feel that pain anymore. And, and I understand how 
people can feel that they don't want to be here. Do you know what? In doing psychic meeting rings, again, I have to come back to this, that I believe that every human being has had a thought somewhere in their life where it goes, it's all too much. Not that they're going to do anything. There's people that do something and there's people that don't. Yep. But we can get help. You need to ask for help. And I didn't ask for help. Mm. I just felt like I was I was going to be okay. And obviously, there were times that I wasn't okay. Yep. And that was... um. And that was a, a, a kind of a bit of a turning point where one day I came back to school and I went, I'm not putting up with this anymore. Mm. And I started giving it back. Mm. Mm. But like if somebody said something to me like, oh, well, get back on, you know, go back to your own country. Yeah. I think you took back, is it, you said something about taking back your power. Oh yeah, I took it back all right. Yeah. When somebody said, like, I remember this one guy, he mm. kind of tapped me on the backside and I grabbed his arm and like went like that and pushed him. I've never been to fight in my life, but yeah. I knew how, I was doing karate as we all know. <laughs> so I knew how to um, defend myself, but I remember just doing that and I, and I was like giving it back. And I remember kind of going up the stairs and this other guy was, I think he lifted my skirt or something mm. up and I just kind of turned around Whack. and whacked him on his uh, on his arm and I thought no how mm. dare you mm. and maybe that's the wrong thing to whack him but how dare he do I and mean, yep. it's not a, I'm not telling people to go out there and do that that's not what you should do but it was a point that enough was enough yeah and I remember saying once when somebody said to me oh you will go back to your own country something like remember something along the lines like I'll oh, Go back to England, you, you convict, and put your shackles on. But I thought, oh my God, that sounds ridiculous now. Say that. But really, we're all from somewhere. We're oh, not exactly. all Australian. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. We're from somewhere. But yes, it was it was horrendous, but I took my power back. And let me tell you, when I started giving it back, they stopped. Mm. So Jackie, in yes. your book, you talk about a lot about, um, or there's a chapter about toxic relationships yes. and, and and friendships. Yes. Um, one of them was a, a, boy, a boyfriend called Paul. Yes. Um... And he sort of, I think, took a lot of your energy away and took a lot of your shine away, I guess. Mm -hmm. And, you know, controlling, told you what you could do, where you could go, all that sort of stuff. And there's a lot of women out there, or even men, that are in those types of relationships now. What sort of message could you give them about, I guess, how to break free? Because a lot of them, I think, are fear, the fear of the unknown, fear of yeah. what's going to happen. It's always going to be better when you get to the other side. Listen, you are enough. So many women and men that are in abusive relationships feel that they that they aren't going to have, I'm going to say this, the lifestyle. Do you know how many women will say to me, Jackie, I don't want to lose, like, I don't want to lose my lifestyle. I don't want to lose my family. I don't want to lose the situation anymore. I'm scared of change. Listen, it's going to be better when you get yourself out of this because if you stay in it, you're going to become a person that you don't like you're going to become a person where you're not where you're not happy you're going to become a person where you're living life but you're not living it and i have to say when i was in it what i did was this guy was very good and i know the listeners are going to um connect with this he was very good at isolating me so in the first six months he was very charming oh he loved everything about me and then it started with i don't like this friend i don't like that friend I don't like you hanging. I had this one guy that I was very um, close friends with that I'd go for a coffee with and go dancing on a Saturday night with, and he was just my um, friend, and he didn't like that. So he'd start saying, you know, he just wants to get with you. I don't want my girlfriend hanging around a, a, another man. It doesn't look good for me. And so the first thing they'll start doing is they'll be charming in the beginning, and then they start isolating you from your friends. So um, what happened was all my I started just it started being all about him and my there was no more friends left because mm -hmm. it was all about him yeah. but it was done very slowly so when I was losing myself in that moment I didn't see it coming so a lot of the time when it's happening women aren't seeing that it's coming but their friends are their family are seeing a difference so it wasn't until I was crying on my bed and I said, why is it universe that God that I'm going through this? I was bawling my eyes out. I said, I was the good girl. Mm -hmm. I listened to my parents. This is my first love. And I said, no, I listened to him. And ironically, he was going out cheating on me, mm -hmm. but I knew that, mm -hmm. but I didn't want to admit that to myself, right? It was better to stay in this relationship than, than, um, than go and try and find somebody else because I didn't love who I was. I had lost all my self-worth. And I lost my self-worth because he was making himself feel better, that he was higher and better than me. So it was almost like my insecurities mm. started coming out and I'm not going to get anybody better than him. I remember this one time he said to me, I was born under the star and I'm always blessed and all my friends are jealous of me. Mm. And I used to think, maybe he's right. Maybe I'm, I'm, I'm not, um, I'm lucky to have him. But in the beginning, I was the one that was confident and strong and he just wanted to bring me down yep. because he knew that if he didn't, I wouldn't sit in this relationship. So he chipped away and chipped away and chipped away until that time I was on that bed crying. And what I want to say to 
any women or men out there, you can get out, be strong. Nobody has the power of you emotionally. Nobody has the power to take that away from you and you're still in there. Mm. Don't allow insecurities to hold you back. There are people out there that have gone through what you've gone through and there is help available. Um, and for me, how I got out of it, I had to start looking at what wasn't working in my life. And what I think is really funny about a person or an abuser that really um, tries to take control over somebody else's life because um, they're not happy with theirs mm. and they essentially want you to feel like, um, what's the right word we're going to use here? <laughs> when somebody really takes control of your life, I want to use the right word, maybe you can help me out, I can't get it, come on angels, help me with it. Yeah. Um, Take, when somebody just takes, it's like a narcissist, right? Yeah. And I, where they're just, they, they know, it's like they're plotting. They know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And it's always your fault. Mm -hmm. a, a, an abuser will always say it's your fault. This is happening because you yeah. made me do this. Yep. Or then they'll go around and say you're crazy. Or they'll make up stories about you to their friends when the relationship does break down so they don't look so bad. When a lot of it's absolute BS. And I've yeah. seen that over the years. So women and men out there, you can get out, have the faith and know mm -hmm. that you are enough. Yep. Absolutely. Mm. Let's talk housewives. Oh, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> she needs a copy for this one. I do. Uh, um, what was the, I guess, inspiration behind going on a show like The Real Housewives of Melbourne? I manifested it. Mm. Um, I'm a vision board with seven, six to seven pairs of legs walking down the red carpet two years before it happened. Mm. And I didn't even know why I stuck it on there, but yeah. I just, I did. And so I... Um, this is a really, really funny story. I was looking out at, we've got a place in, um, in Newcastle. I was looking at the beach and I was watching um, The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. And I said to my husband, I'm gonna be on a show like this. He goes, you know how hard it is to be on a show like this? I said, watch me, I'm a manifester, man. I'm gonna do this. The next day I received a phone call from a friend of mine that said they'd put me forward for a show called The Real Housewives. And nobody knew the show was that it even existed. Yep. And he said, I rang up the big executive producer and said, I've got the star of the show. And I said, oh my God, did you really do that? And they're like, yes. And I was already a well-known psychic in Newcastle. And what had happened is when I received the phone call from my friend, the executive producer had called me and she wanted me to come to Melbourne, but Ben was working on his record. So we'll go to Melbourne anyways mm. and see how the universe yeah, works, the synchronized right events, yeah, yeah, at the right time. And so I get to Melbourne. But before I got to Melbourne, I was sitting on the plane and I did a meditation. Mm. And they said that she's going to test you. She wants to know if you're the real deal. And she wants to know if you're really um, this amazing psychic that she has heard about, from other yeah. people um, about. So I walk into St Kilda where we're meeting her at this uh, pub. And so we walked in with it and the casting agent was there, Kazi. Mm. So I'm sitting there with, um, with the casting agent and I'm sitting there with um, the executive producer. And she goes, okay, now tell me something. And I looked at her and said, I don't like to be tested. And no, I don't yeah. do my readings to be tested. You Put either, yeah, yeah, I don't do that. And I don't do cold readings either. Mm. Um, because I don't waste my energy on trying to prove what I do to anybody. Mm. You, your faith and you'll get there when you get there. And that's how I see life. For other people in there, whatever they believe in. Mm. So for me, I was like, I'm not, I'm not going to be tested. So I'm sitting there and I hear the angels and start talking to me. So I said to her, You've just broken up with your partner and I named him and I said, you've got two children. I said, everything's going to be okay. Mm. She's not a Googleable woman. Let me tell you, she's not even on social media. And um, she goes, she just looked at me and she goes, what? And I said, you're going to be okay. And she just had separated a week prior to that. And I said to her, and um, your grandfather's here. Mm. And I named him. Mm. She said, that's not his name. His name's David. I said, no, his name's Joseph. I said, mm. because he's standing right behind you. And I'm chatting with the man. And she goes, that's not his name. So we're going back and forth. Mm. And unbeknown to me, she walks into the toilet, rings her mother up and says, Mum, what's that grandfather's name? And, he, and she says, David. Mm. And then she goes, is that his real name? She goes, yeah, that's David. And then she goes, no, actually, on his birth certificate, on his birth certificate his name is Yosef. That's the name I told her he, that who was standing there, mm. Yosef. She goes, what? She goes, why didn't you tell me that? She goes, because he was a Holocaust survivor. Mm. So he changed his name. Yep. And she just came out, she was crying. She goes, how do you know that? I said, because I'm sorry, yeah. I'll speak to Sarah. <laughs> and um, she said, you're already on the show anyway. She said, from even when you walked in, I could see your energy. You. But the point was that the angels were like, she's going to test you, but we want you on this show. And I knew I manifested this show because I wanted people, I wanted to bring awareness to psychic energy. I wanted to bring awareness to um, manifesting positive energy, the power of, 
um, affirmations. And I wanted to bring that, that to the show for people to see. And I knew that this was going to be something that's going to allow me to show people on a broader and higher scale. Do you feel like that's what the show did? For me, yes, yeah, yeah. but not whilst I was on the show. No. My God, <laughs> like, come on. There was a lot of twos and fro's and there was, you know, there's, there's been some times that I've been in situations that I don't agree with. Mm. I don't gossip about people. I don't get caught up in people's dramas, but this is a show and they like to see that and people do like to see that. I yep. know that sounds, um, some people go, Jackie, is that critical with what you do? I go, no, because I'm still bringing awareness to what I do. And I'm authentic. The reason that I'm told that I'm um, one of the fan favorites on the show is because I am authentic and, and I stay true to who I am. Yep. And I will never um, I will never um, part from that. Mm. And so I am keeping a real and I'm being true to who I am. So for me, I don't see it as a negative. And I, in fact, I actually really enjoy filming. Mm. I, don't enjoy, I don't enjoy the negative parts of it, but I do enjoy when it is good, it's good. Mm. Is and there anything you did or said on the show that no. you regretted? No. no. I mean, there's some things I've oh my God, probably could have just pulled back a bit like yeah. saying the word pitch girl on there. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't the best. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh dear. Especially, but that person deserved that. And mm. that's in my book where somebody had said to me, oh, you're just from Newcastle, what do you know? Mm. And I'm a person that believes that every human being is on the same level. I don't judge people on their money, their social status, because we're all on the same yep. level. Where sometimes some of those women can be a bit judgmental with that. Mm. And, and I believe that's one of the reasons they put me on the show because they know that I'm very humble and I will never forget where I come from. Mm. And I'm very proud to have been um, to have grown up in Newcastle. And um, and so when this person was putting me down and essentially um, Nova Castrians, I wasn't having that. So I turned around and said, well, you're just from your mother's pitch car, which means that we're all from our mothers. We're all born the same way. So who are you to judge anybody else based upon where they come from? Exactly. What's next for you? What would you like, what would you love to do for the, from say now and for the next 40 years? I want to take my Shine It Up show internationally I want to inspire women and men all over the world that we all have the power. I want to be able to um, motivate and continue to um, express love to every human being that there is around. And listen, I'm still a human being. I still evolve. Man, there are days that I get frustrated. And there are days that um, I think, this is bullshit too. We all go through that. But it's learning how to um, elevate your consciousness. And I feel like um, we all have it but we just don't tap into it out of fear. So I want to teach people how to consistently tap into that universal energy that we all have and that power to create the life that you want, that happy life. Mm. The things that I want to say also about manifesting is that if you're not manifesting with the right intent or, or according to the highest good, that means the highest good of all, you're not going to get those things that you're mm. asking for. Mm. So true. I want to continue to inspire yeah. people all over the world. Yeah, because last year, I think it was last year, you did your Shine It Up yeah. tour yeah. Uh, around the country. Yes, and, and I'm doing another one. Oh, great. Yes! Yay! Yes! yes. <laughs> I can't wait. They were hugely successful, and mm. I think a lot of people did get a lot from um, what you had to say, I, I guess, about life and, and learnings. And as you said, like, I'm going to go and do my vision board when I get home now. Yeah, no, you're going to do yeah. your vision board. And yeah. what you're going to do is when you when you create a vision board, and I think um, the next Shine Up tour will also show people how to manifest and create that space of what they want in their, their lives. You have to actually believe that that's your heart des heart's desire. You know, so many people say, Jackie, I want that beautiful house, um, you know, that's got 10 bedrooms. And I'm like, do you want that house for everyone to look at you and go, look at our house, it's amazing? Or do you want the house because you want it to be filled with laughter and joy with your friends and children and kids? Is yeah, that, what's the intent that, That's, that's the intent. Yeah. Then you'll receive that. That's truly your heart's desire. But mm. if you're doing it the wrong intent, you're not going to have it. So I really want to get involved in, in showing people how to manifest that. But yes, do your vision board, but mm. make sure that you'll, you'll be fine. <laughs> you, you do everything with the right intent anyway. I can feel that, girl. <laughs> Thanks, love. All right. You want to have a little game to yes. like close off? Let's the, game it up, girl. Let's game it up. All right. So then I'm going to ask you some questions and you just got to fire off some answers. Mm -hmm. uh, what TV character is your spirit animal? Ooh, there's so many. I'm going to have to say a dog. I'll tell you why, because um, dogs energetically, um, unconditional love, and they're just so beautiful. <laughs> I love dogs. I have my little Chloe that's passed away. I love my little Dobie. Oh, I was a Doberman. Oh. I, I grew up in German Shepherds yeah, and Dobies, yeah. 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 Um, what would you be doing if you weren't doing 
psychic abilities and being on the housewives. Don't know, Don't know. because it was always there. It was, it was ingrained path. in me, it was innate in me, and I believe that it's never going to go away. Mm. Do you know, I will say this, even if I said that I'm never going to do a psychic reading again, I can't not do it. No. Um, there was a time when um, I was angry with the universe and I said, I'm done with this for the moment when I was going through that situation of trying to remove myself out of the toxic relationship. And I'm telling you, I just kept hearing the messages, go and tell yeah. them, shine it up, girl. I was like, this is bullshit. I need to be shining up for myself. <laughs> yes. But it never goes away. So yeah. I can't answer that because I believe that I was always going to be doing this. What was your, who was your first celebrity crush? <laughs> Tom Cruise. And I did like The Rock. But he's not, oh, as, the rock. Better, but he's not as good looking as my papa there. <laughs> over there. Are you, Bobby? <laughs> no, Tom Cruise. Uh, what was the last thing you Googled? I do love Tom Cruise. Um, oh God, what did I Google? Oh, I Googled Croatia. <laughs> I did. Yeah, I did. I did. Croatia. Yeah. Uh, what's the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened to you on set or on the show? <laughs> I'm just to... um, oh, God, embarrassing. Oh, we're all getting dressed and a cameraman walked in and... I just kind of turned myself around so he didn't see, see everything there because I was getting dressed, but he walked in accidentally. It was all of us housewives there. But also there's another episode that they filmed when I was sleeping and that I got up and there was cameras everywhere, thanks to my husband, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> uh, night in or night out? Night in. Absolutely. Uh, if you were to win a Logie, who would be the first person that you would thank? The universe. Mm. The universe, God, the universe. What's uh, your most used emoji? The angel, <laughs> girl. <laughs> the angels. What's the one thing you could never, or what's one thing we would never know about you? I can break dance. Can you? Yeah, like I can pop a lock. <laughs> no, I can. I can do back spins, I can do helicopters. Yeah. Do the I robot. Do, yeah, all of it. But I'm doing like back spins and helicopters. I actually taught myself how to break dance well, by listening to Well, you're a dancer. You're a dancer. Back I tried to be. Back I in love the day. it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm popping. Yes. Uh, what's one thing um or oh, sorry, what's your favorite all-time movie? Dirty Dancing and Beaches. Mm, love it. Yep. Uh, hidden Talent? What's a Hidden Talent, Ben? <laughs> Come on. I can wiggle my ears. That's Can my you? Hidden talent. Yeah. <laughs> wiggle them. Yeah. Oh, really? Can you really wiggle them? Oh my God! <laughs> Are you serious, girl? <laughs> do I have a hidden talent? I think everybody knows everything. No, I don't have a hidden talent. I can do a um a donkey um sound where you go. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> you know why? Because my father. When he had found out the, the guy that I was going out with, that guy that I went through that toxic mm. relationship with, he said, oh, he's just a donkey. He's a muggeratz, which means a donkey. <laughs> and so I learned <laughs> <laughs> uh, What's the last TV show you binged, watched? It's the uh, Vikings. Oh, I haven't watched that one yet. It's good. Yeah. The Gods. Mm. The gods. Thank Woo! you so much for coming on the show. Can I just say this? Yes. Thank you for having me. And you know, it's a blessing that you've asked me to come on your show. And I just feel I'm inspired by you yeah. too. Can I say that? Because <laughs> you're you. so the your interview, the way you interview, you make people feel really good about themselves. Oh, and you make people no, but you do. I'm not like you, Oprah Winfrey of Australia. <laughs> no, so you can be, girl. You can do anything you choose to do, girl. But I feel like you um you bring out, you make people feel comfortable. Oh, and thank um, and I thank you for that. Thank you. I thank you. Well, have a great tour. Thank you. God bless you. Mm -hmm.